Shalom, shalom, good morning, praise God, hallelujah. It is Thursday morning and uh, what a privilege uh, to spend some time with you in the Word. I'm a bit early, I've been caught up a bit, so I just decided let me just come on. So I know it's not on time, but praise God, I really want to share this revelation with you. I really want to share uh, what God is revealing and I believe many of us will know and understand you know, sometimes we, we uh, want to move in the, in the power of the Holy Spirit and signs, wonders and miracles. But yeah, we pray for and then we do not understand. But yes, good morning. Salamat siang to all my Indonesian friends. Good morning, good morning to everyone. Hallelujah, praise God. Pastor Marius, goeiemorgen. Good morning, Doc Marius. My God bless you and Doc Aniki. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited about this word. I'm really excited about what God is about to do, the revelation, the things that um, God is busy with. Amen. So yeah, I believe this is a new day, a day that God has made and don't miss what God is about to teach. Yesterday, I spoke about, let's read in, uh, let me pray first. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I honor you. I worship you. I thank you for revelation knowledge. I thank you for a rhema word. I thank you for, 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 for uh, showing us, Lord. I just want to say, Father, we we so appreciative that you've created us, us, that you've sent your Son, and that He died in our place, so that we can have life and that we can live in this life of faith. It's not just portion or partly but live a life of faith and i honor you this morning holy spirit i just want to worship you lord i want to worship you create an atmosphere of the supernatural to just manifest lord i i honor you may the ones listen to the word father being touched and being transformed may you raise them up lord may you touch them may the word set them free but may they come to the understanding to bring the revelation Father, I honor you. I thank you. I thank you for the men and women, you know, in our lives, people that care for us. Father, bless them. Bless them. Bless the people, Lord, that sow into this ministry. Father, may they part partake, Lord, in also the things and, and in all the souls and all the people being, being touched by this ministry. Father, I pray your blessing over them. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning. So yesterday, my theme is the word become flesh. Let's read in John chapter 1 verse 14. And the word Christ become flesh. Elmeri, goeiemorgen, nig, goeiemorgen. And the word became flesh, human incarnate and tabernacled. Fixed his tent of flesh, lived a while amongst us. And we actually saw his glory. Such glory as only begotten Son receives from His Father, full of grace and, uh, and truth. Amen. And uh, so, yesterday I was talking how to develop that life of faith. And I want to tell you, the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Faith is not something we need when we have a storm. Faith is not something we pull out of the pocket when it's needed. And like I said yesterday, uh, Sophia, goeiemorgen, good morning. And why this is revelation is for me is so, is so huge because the word become flesh. And like I've said, it's something in the spirit. Jesus was spirit became flesh, human coming into this nature. And he, he came to, to, to uh, die in our place and, and bring Victoria so that the resurrection power could be released. So, it's spirit, flesh, or natural, and then spiritual manif uh, man uh, manifestation. Pastor Tolly, goeiemorgen, good morning. I want to say it again. It's the spirit, supernatural, realm become flesh, or become natural, and then out of that, release the resurrection power, the supernatural. So this is, Jesus is that example. And I was thinking, you know, in Acts chapter 1 and 2, when they've waited for the Holy Spirit, it says that the Holy Spirit manifests like tongues of fire. Once again, the Holy Spirit Spirit manifests in the natural in a form of tongues of fire, baptize them and release a resurrection 
power in the disciples. And after that, Peter stood up and he, and, and he spoke and 3,000 people come to, to, to know Jesus. 3,000 people in one day got saved. And that's the thing I want to talk to you about. This is the thing that God is busy speaking to me. How to develop a life of faith. This morning, I want to continue to bring a revelation on what I'm actually speaking to. Hello, my darling wife. Good morning. Hello, Daniel. There in, uh, uh, what is the place name? <laughs> now I know. Daniel, good morning. Goeiemorgen. My brother, uh, yes, now I forget. But anyhow, may God bless you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. So, let's go on to part two of this revelation I want to share with you. Because the just shall live by faith. Faith should be a lifestyle, not something you use when you need it. Amen. So, let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the conviction of things unseen. So faith is knowing something the supernatural in the spirit must manifest and being relieved must become a visible manifestation in your heart. Romans 10 verse 8, 9, 10. What does it say? When that revelation becomes part of your, 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 your heart, you, you understand? And that, out of your heart now, you speak for. And that releases the supernatural. And, and I want to continue on that. So, faith is the substance for things hoped for. The conviction of things unseen. The word that has come into us is called conception. And that's what I want you to do. The spirit Becoming flesh, there's a conception that needs to happen before there can be a pregnancy and a birth of that power and glory of God. I mean, the word has been conceived. The important thing is this. You have to know what is taking place. I mean, if we take an example, a woman goes to the doctor. She missed a cycle. She do a test past the young Huya Mora. Good morning. She, she. She go to the doctor, she, she go, and, 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 and I mean, to look if there is a baby. I mean, the doctor tests her and says, you are positive. Pastor Bertha, good, good morning. Uh, congratulations, anniversary. May God just bless you. May God bless your family and, and you and the ministry. May God just bring the fullness. That is yet to come to a much higher dimension what you've already experienced. Amen. So then the doctor says, after being having a test, that you are positive, you have a baby on the inside. And that's the thing I want you to say. The spirit of the word of God that we so easily quote and said, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Pastor Lapis Guiamore. Must there must be a conception. Of that word in your heart that produces that that baby or that, that it comes from spirit become flesh in the natural and then out of that comes the conception the the, the evidence of that word becoming part of you a revelation that you now speak with that authority and said be healed in Jesus name because by his stripes, the revelation, the conception, the power being released and understand. That's your faith that translate that or bring the things in the spirit into reality. Like the, the woman that's getting pregnant. Until she knows she's pregnant, you know, it's only a thought because of some things. But now it's being confirmed. Now with that authority, she can say, I'm pregnant. The same with the word of God. The word needs to become flesh. Amen. Before it can manifest in the power and the manifestation of, of, uh, of what the word actually carries. Amen. I say the doctor test and says you are positive. You have a baby on the inside. Amen. So what is that? Conviction of things unseen. There must be the word must be there must be a conception and the conviction that the word is the truth and faith is the thing that brings you in that truth. Amen. 
Because many people, you know, then they believe, then they don't. Then they pray for sickness and, and, and then that's the next moment they fall back into, you know, in unbelief. Amen. So I want you to see that. So a conviction of things unseen. Now you know you are pregnant. So the thing is, we need to become pregnant by the word of God. So you start telling people of what you are sure of. It's not now I, I, I believe that you are healed by the stripes. No, no, no. It's now a conviction. It's now a reality. It's not something you hope for. The conviction produced life of that word. Now out of that authority, when you speak, it must happen. But if we just take the word without the conviction and only a knowledge, and you speak from a knowledge point of view, it's not, it's a false pregnancy. Because you're not pregnant and being convicted by the truth of the word, your faith has not been activated. Because faith activates that word and you become pregnant with that word. And now out of the heart you speak what you know. And say be healed in Jesus name. Amen. I said you start telling people that you are pregnant. Maybe three months, whatever. So the conviction must come deeply into your spirit that this is the word that God has spoken inside our hearts. Only then we can provide substance. Only then when you speak, and, you, and that's what Jesus did. He listened what the Father says, it becomes flesh in the natural, a conviction in his heart. And that's why he said, let it be according to your belief, or whatever you want. And then what? The person got healed. The person got set free. Amen. We now can provide a healthy nutrition for this baby. So the word now through your faith become a conviction like you've been pregnant. Now that baby needs to be taken care of. There's nutrition you need to feed this baby because the word that emanates from your heart in your mouth needs now to become a substance. You know, you cannot feed today the baby good food and tomorrow bad. What will be the result? The baby will not be healthy. The word coming out of your heart through your mouth will be filled with faith and not faith. Faith and stress and worry and anxiety. The word will not fulfill completely. What? Because there's not, because of the nutrition of what? And I want to tell you how you feed this conviction of the word becoming flesh. Becoming a substance in your heart. Amen. I say if the mother is unhealthy, the baby will be unhealthy. If the mother is going through emotional turmoil, the baby will go through the emotional turmoil. The state of the mother will be the quality of life within a womb. That's why when God speaks something to your spirit, don't let anyone contaminate you. Be careful who you talk to and what you read afterwards. Be careful of the revelation of the word that become a substance, that conception in your heart. You know, be, because it's growing, it's growing in your faith. It's bringing an atmosphere, a higher level of understanding because now it live on the inside. It's not just a word anymore. Many people just quote a word but never felt pregnant with that word. You understand? I hope so. <laughs> so I say choose whoever will get near you because you have a baby on the inside get those who have conceived life on the inside only those the one that you allow so when you meet him your baby will leap in the womb so when you that pregnancy of the word and let's say you God wants you to pray for someone but now you have that conviction that baby and you know that you know when you speak for the word of God something is about to happen Amen. So, and that's the thing. What happened in your spirit? That word leap, like the Holy Spirit is, excuse me, is excited for the word to be released. Amen. And at the sound of the greeting. So what is it? We sow, sown from the word to the spirit, to our hearts. Amen. We feed the pregnancy with the same kind of words it was conceived with. If you have conceived the word concerning finances, you cannot talk about character. 
Fill it with words concerning finances. If that is the word that impregnates you, start now declaring the things in line with that. And that becomes over finances. And as you declare that, speak that, you feed the word revelation you have. That God wants to bless you. That there is a change in the season in your finances. Now you start declaring it. And as you feel it, your faith rises. And what happens when the devil comes and tells you something or situation? You say, it is written. Why? Because it's been written on your heart, becoming something out of spirit, natural. Now you start living in faith. Because your faith has rise to a level of the manifestation of the resurrection power of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, I say, if you, <coughs> sorry, I'm so excited. So, if you have conceived the word concerning finance, fill it with finance, scriptures. I said, built into that dimension, the baby needs to take that kind of life. Because that's the area that needs to be fed until... It grow and grow and brings you to a higher dimension of faith. Amen. I say if it's words concerning uh, the prophetic, feed the prophetic nature of that baby. Amen. Maybe words about the miraculous. You feel that God wants to use you in the, to flow in the miraculous. Now you have to feed that word because the word becoming a revelation. Now as you feed it, your faith rises and rises. And you're getting... More, let's say, sure that I can now pray for someone. And knowing something is happening in the spirit. That's basically what I'm talking about. So what is God speaking to you? That baby must come to the full blossom. No mixed seeds. Amen. So the thing is also, what does God speak? What has been falling in your spirit for 2023? In my spirit, God is saying, you know, Luke chapter 10, verse 12, 13, and 14, about the woman that's been 18 years under that spirit of, you know, that demonic of, of sickness. And he saw her in the, in, the, in, the, in the synagogue. And he called and he laid hands upon her. And he said, woman, thou art loosed. And immediately she rise up. And she could worship God. God is speaking to me that 2023 will be a year of whatever kept you bowed down. Doesn't matter how long, many, maybe for many years. But this is the season where God said, I've seen you. I've seen your condition for many years. But this is a due season. I've seen your hardships. I've seen what you're going through. I've seen how long you've struggled with that sickness. I've seen how long you've struggled with finances. But this is your season. I've seen you come here. And God is going to lay His hands upon you. And you will get healed. You will rise up. And the condition that kept you bowed down for not doing the will of God. God is going to lift you up. Raise you up. And you will start worshipping in a total another dimension. Not being held back. And that's what in my spirit what I feel about 2023. And that excitement. So what do I, what is my expectation of 2023? Being set free. Flowing in the miraculous. Why? Because I live now a life of faith. Not up and down, up and down. Amen. Hallelujah. I say some things take a longer time to bring birth. I say gestation period is different from, um, from men and then from cows. So certain seed have a different gestation period before it will come up. Amen. So some things, maybe for years, and for many people, I believe this is the season. This is the time where God will uplift you out of whatever kept you in an area of your life, being bowed down, unable to truly worship God in full truth and, 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 and the things. Amen. So in Romans 10, 9, it says, we have confessed with our mouth. Now we believe with our hearts, we've received, and we are saved. We want the results. Amen. I say what you believe not only saves you, but will cause you to come into a spiritual position. And that's the thing. It creates an atmosphere. As you feed that word of revelation, Pastor Michel Guillemore, as you feed that, it grows. It grows your faith condition. Amen. 
So what you believe alters your position from being under the problem now to becoming above to solve it. Solve it. Now I understand John G. Lake and his healing rooms, why people had to come and they stayed there until they were healed. What was the problem? They know maybe the word here, but the word never became flesh in their hearts a reality. They've never conceived of the word. They've never fed the word and their faith was like a broken chain. Then they, they're not. They didn't live a life of faith. So that's why some people were not healed immediately. So they came to the healing room and then every day they will feed that revelation by the stripes of Jesus you are healed. So that word promise is being fed in the spirit and as their faith rise to a higher level, the authority and the manifestation of what's, what's coming with that word that you've been conceived, I am healed by his stripes. Guess what? Then they healed. Some people two days, some people five days. There were even people 28 days that it took for them, for their faith to cultivate and being impregnate, impregnated by the word before there was a manifestation of that word in their lives. And this is what the thing excites me. You know, so, yeah, let me go on. I say, from sickness into a place of being healed, moving you out from an old position and giving you a new position. What you believe repositions you. Hallelujah. To believe it right, you can't just believe it in your head, but it needs to come to your heart, the soil. That seed of the word needs to come in the soil, and the soil needs to be prepared. And as it cultivates and start growing, Hallelujah. You know what? Then it will produce a harvest. Amen. I say all these problems seem, seem to be above you, but through the conception, one day you rise and say, yes, this can be done. I can reach the nations of this earth. I can move in the supernatural. Otherwise, everything God, has, God says seems to be too far above us. For many people, it's... They cannot reach it. Why? Because it never became, the word never became a seed of conception, a reality in their hearts. Amen. It never become flesh in the natural. The resurrection power can flow. The spirit again, the manifestation of that word. Amen. Faith says you will never be in a place of inad inadequacies, never again. He sent forth His word and healed them. And that word repositioned them, got them ready, and then you can have whatever the word promised you. The word, the word must reposition me in such a way that now I can take what He said and could have it. For many of us, the word, we, we, we know the word, but we've never allowed the word to become flesh, a seed in our heart. A natural thing which grow here and then manifest out of our mouth speaking and manifest the supernatural in the natural because of the process that what happened. Amen. I said with the mouth confession results in salvation. Everything that pertains to your salvation will come out of the second confession. When you believe in your heart, it has given you a spiritual position. That's the thing. If you have the revelation in your heart regarding God's promises, His word, your position in Christ, when that is in your heart, guess what? You have a total new spiritual position. But if you have fear and anxiety, you also have a different position. Amen. Because of your spiritual position, what you say now is that what you're going to see. All things come into being by the word. The very word was life. My life is in, in the word. Light is in, the, in that word and darkness cannot comprehend it. Amen. Darkness, sickness, devils, deceptions cannot lock onto you. Can't comprehend how to keep down because you have so much light in you because of the word. And that's what people lack today. They lack the word of God. They lack the word of God. They lack the word of God. Amen. So when the word becomes flesh, 
There is now no way to hide God's glory. When the word becomes flesh, it is full of grace and truth. It's an understanding, a level of faith that you are manifest. People receive both grace and truth. So normally a problem is above me, but when the word of God comes to me, it works and moves inside me. So it's no longer out there anymore, but it's now in my heart. It gives me a position to rise from underneath it to become above it, to a right standing. This is why God sent His Word first. Amen. However you handle the Word is what you're going to get. When you reject the Word, you reject all of salvation. It doesn't matter if you cry, laugh, cut yourself, bow, uh, uh, have all kinds of religious manifestations, but if you re reject the word, you are finished. You get nothing. And many people do not know how the word, how they can conceive the word in their heart, so that it can manifest, become flesh, and out of that, the resurrection power can flow. I mean, I say when you are in this new position, you confess will result in salvation. The problem is no longer a problem because you are above it. I mean, so everything you need will come to you. I say, you get revelation. By His stripes you are healed. So into your heart, to the Spirit. It saturates you until your declaration to be healed in Jesus' name. Don't have, you don't have to... Uh, uh, well, I said, don't push this to something. This is your life of faith. Amen. And from this platform of daily life of faith, the gift of faith functions very easily. But if every word God says to you is always a struggle, the gift of faith will have difficult breaking through. If your life is not a life of faith, but a struggle, Pastor Saki Guyamora, but a struggle, what happens? So, I say this is why many cannot function in the miraculous today. But when we lay the proper foundation as easy as it is to train people how to prophesy, you can train people how to operate in the dimensions of the gift of faith. And this is why we need to know that. Don't just pray for revival or miracles. Learn the process of the word that needs to come. And being impregnated. The word needs to become flesh before it can produce life. Not just in your head. Amen. I say it takes a certain type of anointing to explain certain types of things. I said Paul could teach where every time they hurt him they went to a new level. This gift must function in our lives. You see it's easy to minister about the word of God. But many people do not function in this level of faith. They won, but they've never learned how that the word can become flesh a reality in your life. That revelation. And then out of the heart, with that faith and, 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 and how you nurture that by the word. And as your faith rises, now you speak. And it becomes a supernatural thing in the natural. Amen. <coughs> I say sometimes you just need to say, We win Salamat Siang in Jakarta. Hello. Sometimes you just need to say, I believe the Spirit of God is saying something like is going to happen. And then it began, begins to break out. Why? It's not just because you are accurate, accurate prophetically. But it's because the gift of faith is operating and so the working of miracles is the thing that breaks out. Things that could never come through comes through. And that's what we need. So we need to walk in another level of faith. My question, are you just because the just will live by faith every day, every moment? That's why... The word needs to become part of you. It needs to become a complete written on the tables of your heart. Because then it's easy for the seed of the word to impregnate you. And as it being impregnated, suddenly you feel something is changed on the inside. God has done something. And as you feed that, 
with the word, guess what? Your faith rise. And as your faith rise, you, you come above what, you know, the things that kept you down. And now from that authority at some point, you will say, be gone Satan, I've been set free. I'm living a life of faith. Everything in my life, whatever you bring, it is done. It is finished. Because I've learned how to be impregnated by the word, through the spirit, in my heart. And that word gives life. And as that life grows, my authority grows. My mindset of understanding grows. And when that word that now become flesh, now we can function like Jesus functioned. Walk and wherever there was something, because he lived in that faith, he lived constantly in another higher level because of being constantly impregnated by the word of God. And knowing and sowing it being in his heart, there was always a harvest. Always. You see, many times we first need to pray in tongues and we need to do this and this. Why? Because we do not live a life of faith. We do not live up to that level of understanding. But God wants you to move in the supernatural. Not to seek it when it's necessary, but constantly on a level. But it can only happen if the Word of God, you know, can become flesh. Amen. Uh, there's one scripture I just want to share with you. I'm nearly finished. Um, so if we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The evidence, the spiritual illumination of the Spirit for good and profit. And then he says to one is given this and this and this. So we have received the ability to be impregnated by the word of God from spirit into the flesh. Amen. And then from that position. Now if you go back to John chapter 1 verse 14. I want you to listen to the scripture from the angle that I'm speaking. And the word Christ and the word become flesh. Human incarnated. Meaning it becomes natural, a living, a living uh, uh, reality. And then tabernacle, fixed his tent of flesh, lived a while among us. The word lived for a moment in your heart, lived, tent, it tabernacled over you. And we actually saw his glory. As you feel it, you rise into that glory. And then it says his honor and majesty. Um, such glory as only begotten son receives from his father full of grace and truth now we start moving in the grace and the truth of God I would like to pray for you but I want to tell you God is going to move God is giving revelation in this time and hour it's time for us to rise up be set free and then start to move in that level of faith that Jesus required of us. And many times he tried to, to teach this to his disciples. But every time they failed because they tried to understand how they can do that in the natural. But never allowed that to manifest, impregnate it in their heart what they've seen. Jesus was the example and that's why we can walk and do the things Jesus did. He was tuned into the Father and only did what happened. Whatever the Father said impregnated him. And he released that. And people will be healed. People will, were set free. And that's the same for us. Now we look at Jesus. And he's waiting for us to rise to that level and doing the same things he did. That's faith. And that's why the Bible in James 5, 16, 17 says, The just shall live by faith. That's what He requires of us. Then out of that, the fullness of the heart, the Word being, being coming life and created life in us, start to manifest and we can say it is written. And people can be set free. Science, wonders and miracles. Why? Because it went through the process and easy now to manifest.
I would like to pray for you. Father, I thank you this morning for this word. Father, thank you that for this revelation. I pray, Holy Spirit, may the word of God be impregnated in our hearts, touched by the Spirit of God, bringing life, a rhema life, to a Logos word. That that body spirit needs to become flesh, needs to become a substance in our heart of hope. And as we being conceived by that revelation, we start feeding that word with the promises of God. And as the baby grows, the faith grows to a level and above whatever holds us back. And then, Father, looking then out of that, we spoke. Or we speak like Jesus did and said, be healed or whatever. Be free in Jesus' name. Because now that word has become a substance creating supernatural manifestation, resurrection power in the natural, just as Jesus did. And, and Father, I pray that you will touch our hearts. Bring a revelation. And may we glorify you. May we understand how faith truly works. I just pray that you will touch everyone. Father, prepare us for this year to come. But may the word live, produce life, and bring the glory of God in this natural environment. Father, I honor you and I glorify you. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. May God bless you. Thank you for watching. Uh, tomorrow I will do a third part on this, just to finish that for a bigger and a better understanding. But I want to tell you, be blessed. Just know that Jesus loves you. You've created for a purpose. You have everything to receive and to manifest in the fullness of God's glory. That He can work through you, the things Jesus did. And that's you and my, you, our inheritance. It's time that the church rise up and start moving and start doing what God requires of us. May you have a blessed day. Share this with someone. I will also put it on YouTube. But just know one thing. You're special. And God loves you. Thank you for watching. Amen.